Hey guys, welcome back. Besiege Early Access Coverage. This is episode 15, I'm Enigmas, and today we're building a leg. A walking leg. And its counterpart, so that we'll have two walking legs. In the most basic sense, it's not going to be true bipedal motion, that's for sure. But we're going to start with the beginnings and getting that whole concept of a walking leg's motion in place. So that next episode we can focus on the actual legs themselves. In this case, you could say we're probably concentrating on the hips. And then next episode will be the knees and the feet. That's probably a good way to describe it. Now, I've been working on this for a little while. I've come up with a number of different things. That some of them worked, some of them didn't work. The ones that worked, I kind of focused on those and refined them down to something that was as simple as I could possibly make it. So that it was easy to illustrate and also easy to work with. Because the easier it is to work with, the uh, the better chances of things um, actually working in the long run. And the more simple it is, the less chance of something going wrong. I've had some very complex designs. Uh, and there's just so many points of potential points of failure that it becomes kind of unwieldy. Now, I'm messing around with a ball joint here because this was kind of the, like the final tweak. And I really wanted to work with a ball joint oriented the way that you see it now. Uh, it won't we're gonna have to replace that ball joint with a swivel but aside from that what you're seeing is the the basics the core of this whole thing is a motorized cog attached to a block and then attached to that block is also three sliders currently it's three sliders we're gonna trim it down to two you'll see that happen that's what's gonna limit the motion in the left and right category so that the leg actually moves forward and back more than it moves up and down. And it'll make more sense to you when you see it. So for now, what we wanna do is we wanna create something that create, it moves around the motorized cog. We get a wider range of motion. So we've got a ballast offset from the middle of the motorized cog. It's attached to the cog with braces, you can see there, and then attached to that ballast is another swivel and then we run a brace from the swivel up to what is now the ball joint, which will be replaced with another swivel because you can see it broke. And then we just built a wooden base for the whole thing while we're building it and testing it to kind of hold it up in the air. And you can see we've got it all connected now. We're using the ball joint, but you can see when it goes up and down the sliders, how they kind of tilt to the left and right. We don't want that. That's indication that things aren't kind of working in harmony and eventually that will probably break. So, in the sense of getting the basics of the motion, we're, we're there, but it's, it's not as good as it could be. So we're just kind of bracing up the base a little bit so that there's a little bit less wobble and we can, can hopefully get a better look at what's going on with the ball joint. But it's not swiveling on our side of the ball joint and that's kind of the thing that was, we were counting on is that it would be swiveling and moving freely and then it would be awesome. But it's not, it's rigid and that's why the sliders are twisting left and right so all we have to do to correct it is replace the ball joint with the swivel and now when we make it go you can see the sliders much more freely moving straight up and down with very very tiny left and right movement in the top slider but not nearly as bad as it was we've got the motion down the way that we want it but one thing that we can do is we can move that swivel down one slider and that will give us uh, an even better um, sort of range of motion that closely, more closely resembles what we're looking for. So that's what we do. We move it down one. We can remove that top slider, but just for testing purposes to make sure that we still had enough freedom to go up and down as far as it needed to, we're good. So I, that's the mechanism. That's the whole hip mechanism that's gonna move the leg front to back and up and down so that it can reset with each step. And then all we have to do is build the leg onto that, build another one on the other side, and you'll have the basics of movement with the leg. I wanted to keep it just that simple so that people could look at it and say, wow, I can do that, I can duplicate that. It's one, two, three, four, five, six blocks and some braces. Very, very simple, very, very straightforward. What we want to do with it isn't necessarily that simple or straightforward, which is good that this is simple now, because if this was a headache to begin with, everything after it would be even more of a headache. You can see the range of motion. It seems stable, it seems smooth, and now we just kind of have to finish off the process to kind of help illustrate exactly how this range of motion translates into something that resembles the movement of a leg. So we're going to put a ballast foot 
down at the end of these blocks and then we're going to connect it to the swivel with braces and then we're going to have an opportunity to see how this works now the important part about all of this is to make sure that we're connecting it to the same point of the swivel as the brace that's extending from the top swivel down to the swivel that's closest to the cog. There's only two swivels, so we're connecting the two swivels and then in that same line of motion, we're connecting the foot. So now you can see very, very clearly, if you imagine that ballast as the foot, it moves forward and down across the ground, up, forward, down, across. Now it's trying to move a lot of weight. <laughs> it's trying to move that entire base and it's actually succeeding and very slowly and clumsily rotating the whole thing. We've obviously broken part of the base from this whole thing, but the leg mechanism itself is holding up fairly well, and we have the beginnings of bipedal motion. So now what we need to do, realistically speaking, in order to illustrate the, the entire concept in its most basic form is to build another leg mechanism on the other side and then test it and from there we'll be able to go ahead and do something with the actual leg itself so that it's a little bit um, more functional a little less friction a little bit more kind of elegance if we can we're going to do that in the next episode so for the rest of this episode i'll let you just watch uh, we're going to duplicate the mechanism onto the other side and then we're going to goof around with it and uh, see if we can't get it to do something that roughly resembles movement the whole idea of actually having two legs working independently without any other kind of support is pretty far-fetched in a game like this. Um, we may try, we, we may just realize that it's, it's not even worth trying because it's never going to happen, but we'll find all that out in the next episode. For this episode, we're kind of celebrating the fact that we've got something that resembles two working legs, even though I put that foot too far out. So we're going to fix that, and then you'll get a chance to see it all working. So I'll let you watch the rest of it in peace. Next episode knees and feet done a little bit better so if you want to be notified when i add that episode you can subscribe to my channel you can also follow me for notifications on social media links for that always in the information section below the video please leave your comments and feedback thanks for watching guys and take care